Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000, Search. In this short presentation, we'll show you how to use the search mode on Rodian Schwartz RTB2000 series oscilloscopes. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of how to operate the RTB2000. If you're new to the RTB, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000, Basic Operation, before beginning this presentation. The RTB's search function can be used to find things such as edges, pulses with certain widths, peaks, and other events that meet the search criteria. As we'll see in this presentation, each of these search types has its own settings. Although searches are most often performed on acquired channel data, they can also be used with math or reference waveforms. The events found by search are displayed in a results table, which includes the result number, the time the result was found, and any relevant parameters. This table is updated continuously during a run, with small brown triangles used to mark the trace at points where a match was found. Let's start with a high-level overview. In this case, we'll use search to find edges in our waveform. We start by enabling search, and then choose both the search type, as well as the channel we want to search. The next step is using setup to configure the parameters for this type of search. Here, we specify that we're searching for a rising edge, which is defined as the waveform rising through a level of 500 millivolts. In this example, our acquired waveform on channel 1 has three rising edges, shown by the brown triangles at the top of the screen. And the relative time at which each edge was found is shown in the search table at the bottom of the screen. The search results and search table are updated continuously during a run, but can be browsed after acquisition is halted by scrolling through the results. Tapping on an event marks it in the display with a small magnifying glass. Enabling an additional feature, called Track Event, will keep the highlighted or selected event in the center of the display. And finally, note that the event table can be saved in CSV format for analysis and or documentation purposes. The RTB supports seven different search types. Basic search types include Edge, Width, Peak, rise or fall time, and runt. In addition to these, the RTB also supports two additional search types that we won't be covering in this presentation. Data to clock, which can be used when evaluating so-called setup and hold times, and a pattern trigger that can be used when performing logic analysis. Let's return to the edge trigger we saw in the previous example. The edge search is found when a waveform crosses a defined level in a specified direction, also called the slope. These can be rising, falling, or either. The hysteresis function is used to prevent unwanted matches caused by noise. The Find Threshold button can be very helpful here, as it will set an appropriate hysteresis value automatically, and will also set the search level to 50% of the overall waveform level. Here we see an edge search on a rising edge with a search level of 250 millivolts. As before, each time the search conditions are met, a small brown triangle is shown above the trace, and an entry is made in the search event table at the bottom of the screen. A width search finds pulses that are shorter or longer than a given time, that fall within a defined time range, or that fall outside of a defined time range. The parameter variation is used to define the duration of these time ranges. For example, if width is 2.308 milliseconds and variation is plus or minus 100 microseconds, the range is 2.208 to 2.408 milliseconds. Note that even though we're searching based on width, we also must specify a minimum level for a pulse. In this example, we're searching for pulses with a width of less than 60 microseconds. The one pulse in this acquisition that matches these parameters is shown in the middle of the screen, and has a width of only about 47 microseconds. If multiple pulses were found with width less than 60 microseconds, they would also be marked on the trace and listed in the event table along with their individual widths. Peak search is also used with pulses, but in this case we're looking for pulses whose peak-to-peak -peak magnitude, or voltage, exceeds a user-defined limit. The only other parameter that needs to be defined is the polarity of the pulse to be searched, that is, positive polarity, negative polarity, or either. Here we're searching using positive polarity and a magnitude of 800 millivolts. Two of the pulses are above this magnitude value, 
and therefore are marked and displayed in the search event table. Negative peak shows when the magnitude goes below the configured threshold. Here, the signal falls below the value of 2 volts a total of 5 times, and the minimum amplitude for each of these cases is shown in the search event table. Unlike an edge search, in which timing is unimportant, a rise or fall time search identifies portions of a waveform where the transition occurs within a given period of time. To do this, we first have to define if we're looking at a rising or a falling slope. And we also have to define the upper and lower levels, since rise and fall times are determined by how long it takes to transition between these two levels. Similar to what we saw in width searches, a rise or fall time search can be made for rise and fall times that are greater or less than a defined value, or for times that fall inside or outside of a defined range. As before, these ranges are defined using a value and a variation. Let's look at an example. Here we're searching for a rising slope with a defined upper and lower level shown. If we set the rise time value to less than 30 microseconds, we find a pulse with a rather steep front edge, and the calculated rise time for this edge, about 8.2 microseconds, is shown in the search event table. The last type of search we'll look at is the run search, which finds pulses that are lower than the expected amplitude. A runt is defined as a pulse that crosses a low amplitude level twice without crossing a high amplitude level. Both of these levels must be specified by the user. The required width of the runt must also be specified, and this is done in the same way we've seen for other types of searches. Here's an example of a runt search. The upper and lower levels are configured, as well as the required width of the runt pulse. Detected runts, such as the one in the center of the screen, and their parameters, are given in the search event table at the bottom of the screen. Let's end with a brief summary. The RTB2000 search function is used to analyze acquired waveforms in order to detect and quantify various events, usually on pulsed or square wave type signals. The most common search types are for edges, widths, peaks, rise and fall times, and run signals, all of which we've covered in this presentation. In addition, Special setup and hold and logical pattern searches are also available on the RTB. For each search type, parameters such as levels and thresholds must be defined by the user. When a match is found, it's visually indicated on the trace using a small brown triangle, and numeric values are displayed in the event table as well. And finally, note that search works on both running as well as stopped acquisitions. This concludes our presentation getting started with the RTB2000 search. If you'd like to learn more about the RTB2000 or other oscilloscope related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.